To date, over 10 million YouTube channels have been permanently deleted. And if you're anything like me, you would rather stick bicycle spokes in your eyeballs than have all of your lukewarm, <coughs> sorry, lukewarm, amazing videos deleted. So I decided to read through all of YouTube's community guidelines multiple times. It was as fun as it sounds. And I found a total of 14 things you must never, ever do if you don't want your channel to get and I'm gonna share them with you now, but quickly, we need to understand a bit about how YouTube actually goes about flagging and deleting videos or channels it deems as inappropriate. Now, YouTube's first line of defense is basically its AI. So obviously YouTube will look at what keywords you're using in your title and description, but it can also use Google Vision to actually analyze what's in your thumbnails. And potentially, I don't know if they actually do this, but they have the ability to do this, identify what is actually going on within your video itself. And so the AI is scanning all of these places to try and find instances of you being the inappropriate bastard I know you are. I'm gonna cry. Now on top of that, viewers can also flag your content as inappropriate or breaching YouTube's community guidelines if they see fit. And then any flagged videos or channels, whether that's flagged by YouTube's AI or flagged by viewers, will be sent to a team of real people at YouTube who will review those videos and channels and decide what actions to take against them. At least that's what YouTube says. In my experience, YouTube will often take action against the video without a real human from the YouTube team ever reviewing it, but then usually there's an option for you to dispute that and sort of escalate it so that a real YouTube employee actually has to look over your video and make a final call. And by final call, if you get caught up in this process, there are a couple of things that can happen. A YouTube employee could review your video and be like, oh no, the AI is wrong, viewers are wrong, this actually doesn't break our community guidelines and you're all good. Or they might review your video and it might be a bit edgy, but it's not actively breaking any serious guidelines that we'll talk about in a second. And so in that case, they'll usually age restrict or demonetize your channel or video. So you're still gonna be on YouTube, you just won't be able to reach younger audiences or actually make money from your content. But the most serious thing that can happen if you do one of the 14 things I'm about to talk about is that YouTube gives you a strike. And this is serious because every time you get a strike, the video that received that strike will be removed from YouTube. And if you get three strikes, so now we know how it works and how serious things can get because three strikes isn't many. I've read stories online where people have gone three strikes in a matter of hours. But in every case I've seen and from reading YouTube's community guidelines, you'll only get a strike if you do one of the following 14 things. So the first one is having an associated account that breaks YouTube's terms of service. And this one's kind of scary because it's really easy to miss because as you might know, you can create multiple YouTube channels under the same Google account. And this hasn't happened to me personally, but I've seen stories online where if one of those channels or the prime primary channel under your Google account gets deleted, all of the other channels under that account get deleted as well for some reason. So long story short, if you have some alt channels where you're doing some shady crap, do it on a completely separate Google account so that when they get deleted, your main channel won't get deleted with them. The next thing you wanna avoid is keyword stuffing. A lot of people think they can outsmart the algorithm by just dumping a bunch of irrelevant keywords into their YouTube descriptions. YouTube will hate you if you're adding keywords that aren't related to your video in your description, or if you're just stuffing a huge amount of keywords into your description in a way that makes it really obvious your description has just been written for the algorithm and not for viewers. And you can see this under the misleading metadata or thumbnails section in the YouTube terms of service. Now I hear all of you in the comments being like, but Marcus, I see all these other YouTubers doing it and their channels don't get deleted. You're right. YouTube seems to be pretty lax with this one, but technically you are liable to get a strike if you get caught doing this. So if you're going to do this, you want to do this like you're sneaking snacks into a movie theater. You want to be a little bit low key about it. So if you're going to try and stuff your description full of keywords, one, obviously make sure they're relevant because the idea of including irrelevant keywords in your description is just dumb anyway, because it doesn't actually do anything. Just because you have Mr. Beast in your description doesn't mean the algorithm is going to think, oh my God, there's another Mr. Beast video. I should give it a hundred million views. But assuming you're including relevant keywords, write your description in a way that it seems like it's catering to viewers. But in reality, you're just writing words that fit together in a way that makes sense. But really, you're just trying to like combine keywords together. Now, the next mistake is a pretty obvious one one, but apparently a lot of people on the internet are dumb because a lot of people do it. And that is comment spamming. And then they go and get their alt account and they respond to their own comment. They're like, wow, that's amazing. It's like, no, you're not fooling us. We know what you're doing. But beyond making you look like an absolute desperate needy loser, you can actually get your channel deleted this way. Now, when I say comment spam, leaving lots of comments is okay, but leaving lots of very repetitive or very obviously promotional comments is not cool. And on screen are the specific types of these spammy comments that YouTube really doesn't like. 
like. But don't you worry, if this seemed obvious, there are more, far less obvious ways to get your channel deleted, which we will go over. So the next way to get your channel deleted is using misleading metadata or clickbaity titles. So the other day, I was keen to watch some football highlights. And when I say football, I mean soccer highlights. And I saw a new video popped up that promised to provide me with the latest highlights, and then it turned out to be someone just playing a game of FIFA. And not only was this really annoying for me, but it actually breaks one of YouTube's terms and conditions. Specifically, according to YouTube, the following types of content are not allowed. A thumbnail with a picture of a popular celebrity that has nothing to do with the content and or using the title, thumbnail or description to trick users into believing the content is something it is not. For example, when there's a serious risk of egregious real world harm. For all you Queenslanders watching this, egregious means really bad. Pretty self-explanatory, just don't do that one. But the next thing that can get your channel deleted is a little bit less obvious. And that is essentially posting content that you don't have permission to actually be posting. Now there is some wiggle room here with something called fair use. And I'll try and leave some links to resources about that in the description. But essentially, and I talked to a lawyer about this, we should all be able to operate under fair use laws, which are the same laws that allow, for example, news outlets to show clips and footage or photos of people who haven't explicitly given their permission to be featured in those news reports. That's just one example of how you can use material you don't own without getting a copyright strike. But essentially, if you're using other people's content and it isn't fair use, you could be opening yourself up to a strike. And again, three strikes could lead to your channel getting deleted. It is impossible to be 100% sure of whether or not your content is or isn't considered fair use because there's not a set amount of check boxes or criteria in order to be considered fair use. Like YouTube say, if it escalated to the point that you ended up in court, which is extremely rare by the way, it'd be up to a judge to decide whether or not your content is considered fair use because even within these guidelines, it's obviously gray area and context matters. But a real quick practical non-legal advice tip I will give you guys if you're struggling to decide whether or not you can include something on YouTube is to just see what all the big creators in your space are doing and see whether or not they're getting sued. Because if lots of large channels are using a couple of seconds of movie clips as memes throughout their videos and they're not having any issues with copyright, chances are you'll be fine too. Or even if you're not fine, chances are those big channels are going to be targeted by people first before the small channels do, which will give you a bit of a heads up. I'll give you a moment to unpretzel your brain by diving into the next thing that could potentially get your channel deleted. Because this one's a rule that you might break without even realizing it. And this is especially true for those of you who are running celebrity fan channels. If you don't make it clear that your fan or celebrity s channel is not the official one, you might get into big trouble from YouTube's impersonation policy. And YouTube defines impersonation in their terms of service as a channel that copies another channel's profile, background, or overall look and feel in such a way that makes it look like someone else's channel. The channel does not have to be 100% identical as long as the intent is clear to copy the other channel. Also, personal impersonation, so content that is intended to look like someone else is posting it, not okay according to YouTube, and also me, that's kind of messed up, don't do that. And YouTube explicitly state here, if you operate a fan channel, make sure you state so explicitly in your channel name or handle. For example, if we take a look at this Elon Musk fan channel, they've done this well, they've made it very clear that their channel is a fan channel, and for that reason, YouTube has not shut them down. Now next, we have the use of synthetic slash altered content. Now this next thing that could get your channel deleted wasn't much of an issue two years ago, but all of a sudden it's skyrocketed in importance. With the explosion of AI, so many channels have AI generated videos and voices. And because of this, YouTube now expects you to disclose whether or not you're using synthetic, AKA AI content in your videos. Now you don't have to disclose everything that is somewhat AI related. For example, filters on beauty channels, totally okay. But let's say for example, example that you deep faked the face of a celebrity onto you. At that point, you need to check this box and inform YouTube of what you've done. Otherwise, you could suffer a strike, which could lead to your channel getting deleted. Now, the next thing we need to consider very seriously are child safety violations. Because videos that feature persons under the age of 13 need to be handled more carefully than a cat at bath time. <laughs> For example, even funny clip compilations of kids getting into accidents or fighting in a school playground can be struck by YouTube. And this is an especially important thing to consider for all the family vlog channels out there. If your video in any way could be seen as uncomfortable or unsafe for the children featured in them, you probably don't want to post that. I'll kidnap a thousand children. Now the next thing that could get your channel deleted is nudity and sexual content. Nudity on YouTube is like stripping at a family reunion. No one wants to see that. It's not the time. It's not the place. Get the 
Sorry. So next time you think about creating a video titled Epic Prank in the Hood in brackets gone wrong in brackets gone sexual all caps just don't please because not only will I hate you forever, but YouTube could delete your channel. Now, the next thing you need to be wary of is violent or graphic content. According to YouTube's policy, violent or gory content intended to shock or disgust viewers or content encouraging others to commit violent acts are not allowed on YouTube. A popular example of a channel who suffered from this policy were Raka Raka. Due to their graphic fight scenes, some of their videos were demonetized and even deleted. Other content that could fall under this umbrella according to YouTube are extremely dangerous challenges or life-threatening pranks. And also fight videos are not allowed unless the fights are professionally sanctioned. Now in practice here, YouTube does seem to give some leeway to gaming creators. But even though I've never come across any cases of this, technically extremely violent and graphic games could be disallowed under this policy. Now, the next thing that could get your channel deleted is a pretty controversial one. Let's take a look back to 2019 where over 300 ads related to the election were deleted. According to YouTube, those ads contained election misinformation, which goes against YouTube's misinformation information policy. Another common space where this can happen is the health space, especially people creating videos related to, you know what I'm talking about. And I know this is a controversial one because how do we draw the line between misinformation and free speech? Well, YouTube basically take it into their hands to draw that line. So if you're covering more edgy topics that some people might consider to be misinformation, you want to be careful with that. There are a couple of specific categories that YouTube particularly dislikes and outlines in their TOS. So the first one is suppression of census participation. So basically basically content aiming to mislead census participants about the time, place, means, or eligibility requirements of the census, or false claims that could materially discourage census participation, big no-no, manipulated content, content that has been technically manipulated or doctored in a way that misleads users, usually beyond clips taken out of context, and may pose a serious risk of egregious harm, very bad, and misattributed content, which is content that may pose a serious risk of egregious harm by falsely claiming that old footage from a past event is from a current event. Back to the future. So if it could be perceived that your channel is remotely related to any of these things, you want to be very careful. Now, our next point might seem like a pretty obvious one, but it actually took down one of the biggest YouTube creators back in the day. Leafy is here. I didn't like him much personally, but he was pretty well known for his drama and rants. But then he began targeting specific YouTubers, making fun of them, and some would say actively encouraging his fans to go and attack those creators. And because of the multitude of these cyberbullying and harassment, issues, YouTube decided to delete his channel forever. So if you dislike someone, disagree with someone, want to make fun of someone for entertainment purposes, that can be okay. But when you cross the line into bullying and harassment, YouTube tries to take that stuff seriously and you could end up with a deleted channel. Dude, back off. <laughs> Specifically, according to YouTube, don't post content that contains prolonged insults or slurs based on someone's intrinsic attributes and don't post content uploaded with the intent to shame, deceive or insult a minor. Now YouTube have said in statements that there are some exceptions, like if something is meant as a joke, but they also say that these exceptions don't give you a free pass to say whatever you want, which is probably how it should be. Hey, I'm all in favor of free speech, but also we don't want things getting too hateful and toxic. Now this next policy, another politically charged one, is YouTube's firearms policy. So this is a topic that a lot of people think their rights cover and YouTube thinks differently, and here's why. YouTube actually has very strict rules about guns and gun related content. Specifically, YouTube don't want you to link to sites selling guns or banned accessories, don't share how to make guns, ammo, or things like homemade silences, don't show how to install accessories that make a gun fire more rapidly. It's not for it's not for this is. And live streams can't show someone holding or handling a gun, and you can't even show guns being transported. Now, if you do have an interest in showing firearms in your content, there are a couple of workarounds. Specifically, you would just want to focus very heavily on purely educational related content. So for example, you can review gun safes or safety equipment, talk about the history of firearms, or give educational insights without showing how they are made or modified, share stories or news related to gun rights, as long as you don't promote sales or modifications, etc. Now, in my experience, YouTube are actually pretty lax with this policy in practice as you'll probably see if you do a really brief YouTube search but still probably want to be careful because if a couple of disgruntled viewers or competitors flag some of your videos technically YouTube can give you a strike and delete your channel and last but not least we have a line that you should basically never cross on YouTube according to YouTube 
even if your intentions are good. So let's say for example that you have a channel about internet security and you post a video as an example of how to hack Marcus's bank account. Now I personally, if you need $12.50 that badly, don't mind, but YouTube does because they would see that video as enabling or promoting illegal behavior. It's now illegal. And it's the same with showing yourself or showing how to do things that are illegal in general, whether that's acquiring or selling illicit substances or even something as simple as like showing people how to download a YouTube video, which is technically against YouTube's rules. So Pablo Escobar, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but Rumble might be the platform for you. Now YouTube have a list of all of the things they specifically don't want you mentioning. And here's the entire list. Feel free to pause the video to check out each one. I kind of hope for your sake and for the sake of the world that you're not really talking or linking to any of these things anyway. But now that we've got all that stuff out of the way and we know your channel's not going to be deleted anytime soon, it's time to actually start getting views on your channel. If you want to learn how to do that, I have a video on screen where I'll break down step-by-step step one of my favorite methods. Catch you there.